In this video, I'll show you how to take a modular monolith and extract one of the modules into a dedicated service. We'll be elevating the logical boundaries between our modules into physical boundaries and moving into a distributed system. We'll have to solve some interesting problems along the way, so let's jump into the code and see what we're going to build. Let me illustrate what our current system looks like. Let's say this is the modular monolith, and inside of it we have our two modules. The first module is called the orders module, and then the second one is called the shipping module. Now these modules respect the boundaries within our modular monolith, and they don't communicate with each other directly. There's no calling to the internal components within a module. Instead, each of the modules exposes a so-called public API. Let me type this out. And this is what you're allowed to call on the other module. So let's say the orders module needs to fetch some information from the shipping module, it's going to send a call to the respective public API of the shipping module. The public API is going to delegate this into the internal implementation, and then we get the response back. The same goes if we want to get something from the shipping module, we reach out to the public API of the orders module, which is going to delegate this call to the internal implementation. And this all works fine while we are still in a modular monolith, because the boundaries that we have here are purely logical. But what's going to happen if we decide to elevate these boundaries into physical boundaries and we move from a monolith into a distributed system? So let's say now our boundaries become something like this, where we have two dedicated components, and you can see that our communication doesn't change. We are still reaching out to the public API of the respective modules, and if you implement this correctly, all that should change is the technology that you're using for communication. So in case of our monolith, the communication is going to be using method calls. Our two modules are in the same application, so using method calls is fine, but when we move into a distributed system, then method calls will no longer work, and we have to resort to network calls using HTTP, and we also have to solve some interesting problems that are going to arise from this. So let's jump into the code, and I'm going to show you how we can migrate from the first implementation into the second one while maintaining our module boundaries. So here is my simple modular monolith that has two modules, the shipping and the orders module. When it comes to the application setup, we have a couple of components. There's mass transit, where we are using the in-memory bus to implement asynchronous communication between our modules. Then we have the respective EF core database contexts. I'm also configuring open telemetry so that I can have distributed tracing. And then I'm exposing some endpoints from my respective modules. Let me quickly start the application. And I'm going to send a post request to the orders module, which exposes this specific endpoint, and I'm just going to create some dummy order. So if I send this request, I will get back the response, but what I want to show you is the distributed trace that this is going to produce. So if I jump into the Aspire dashboard, here is my distributed trace at the end, and you can see that we have quite a bit of spans inside. So what's going on here is our post request reaching the API, and it's going to insert the order into the database, and you can see the query for this here. So let me open the text visualizer, and here is our insert statement. Now the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to publish an order created integration event, and you can see that this is part of the current span. But after we publish this event, the current span completes, and we get a response back in Postman, or to be more specific, it's returned to the client. And then we can asynchronously receive the integration event. You can see that we have a span here that is processing this event, and this is going to send some additional queries to our database, and this is handled by the shipping module. So if I take a look at this span here, and we check out the SQL query, you can see that we have an insert statement into the shipping schema and the respective shipment records table. So this is now part of our shipping module, and this communication is done through our public API. Let me show you what that looks like. Inside of the orders module, there is the public API folder, which contains my order service abstraction. This is part of the public API, but also the order created integration event, which is what we are publishing over the queue. Now, if we go into the post endpoint for creating an order, this is where we insert the order into the database using EF Core, and then we publish an integration event using mass transit. Now, because we are in memory, there's no need for a message broker, and we can publish this over an in-memory message bus, and this will be consumed by the order created consumer in the shipping module. So you can see it's referencing the integration event, which is part of the public API of the orders module, and it's also using the order service to obtain some additional information by sending us synchronous request. So now let's say that I want to take the shipping module 
and extract it into a dedicated service. How could we solve this while still respecting the boundaries within our modular monolith? So I'm going to take a step-by-step -step approach in this migration, and I will start by extracting the public API into a dedicated class library. Let's say I create a solution level folder, and let's call this the orders, and this is where the components in the orders module are going to live. And I'm going to create another folder, I will call it shipping, and this is where our shipping module is going to live once we create it. Now in the order folder, I'll create a new project, and this is going to be a class library. And I'm going to call this eShop Orders Public API. Let me click next, I'll use .NET 9 for this project, and then what I want to do is take the types that I have in the public API folder and move them into my new class library. So I'm going to drop them in, I'll get rid of this default class, and now I need to add a reference for the public API in the eShop API project, which is only going to contain the orders module once we are done with our migration. Now let me adjust the namespaces for my class library, I'll say refactor, adjust namespaces, and I'm going to update this. And now I want to make sure that my solution is still building, and you can see that the build is passing, so the first step is complete. Now I can get rid of this public API folder, and the next thing I need is a dedicated project that's going to contain my shipping module. So let me create this project inside of the shipping folder, I'll say add new project, I will pick ASP.NET Core Web API. I'm going to call this the eShop Shipping API. And then I'm going to choose .NET 9. I'll use HTTPS. I don't need open API support because I'll create my own. And I want to have container support using Linux. So let me create this project. And I'm just going to brute force my way into this migration. So I'll take the modules folder in the eShop API, which we should rename to eShop Orders API. But let's consider this later and I'm going to drop the modules folder into my new shipping API. Now I'm just going to remove the orders folder and I'm going to add a reference to the public API, which is a class library that should be available to my other modules. Now when it comes to how you can distribute this, typically you're going to either reference it directly if all of your services or modules are inside of one solution and if you're using multiple solutions for your services, then you'll have to distribute the public APIs through NuGet packages. So I've moved my shipping module into its own project and we removed it from the initial eShop API project. I will have to fix the NuGet packages, so I'm going to take all the references that I have here and I'm going to paste them into my new project. I may not need all of these packages, but I can solve this later. Then I'm going to take everything that I have in the program file and copy it, and I'm going to drop it into the program file of my shipping modules API. And now I have to fix a couple of things that are missing. We also want to delete the shipping module from the eShop API, so let me go ahead and do that. And then this will force me to fix some additional compilers in the old project. So let's get rid of any references that we no longer need. I'm going to remove the consumer definition, the database context, and the API endpoints. Everything else can remain the same. Now let's go back to our shipping modules API. You can see that we are missing some references, for example, the database initializer. We can leave the consumer in place. The database context for the orders module is no longer necessary, and we will see how to solve the order service that we currently don't have, although we do have access to the public API. We can also get rid of the orders endpoints because they're no longer necessary. So let's solve the database initializer next. I'm going to take what I already had in my old project, and I'm going to drop it into the shipping API. Now I need to fix both of these to no longer reference the wrong schemas. So I'm currently in the database initializer for the orders module, and I'm going to remove everything that's referencing the shipping schema. So I'll get rid of this, and then what I have here, creating the order schema and the respective table can remain in place. I'll do the same in the other database initializer, but in reverse, and here I want to get rid of the order schema. Now note that we have a foreign key constraint to the orders order ID column from my shipping column. Foreign key constraints aren't that big of a problem, considering that we are still using a single database under the hood, which I won't be migrating here, I just want to migrate the modules themselves while still using one database and maintaining logical separation using schemas. If we also want to move the database, then we have to get rid of this foreign key constraint. For now, I'm going to leave it in place, 
and this completes my database initializer updates. Now let's see what I have to fix next. So there's this order service, which is currently missing, and I'm going to create a services folder in the shipping API, and I'm going to add a new class inside, which I will call the order service. I'll make this an internal and sealed class, and it's going to implement the iOrder service, which is part of the public API, and for now we're going to leave it unimplemented. Now when it comes to the service registration, I'm going to register it as a transient service, and we'll see how to implement this in just a moment. At this point, I should be able to build my solution, and the build should pass, which you can see is the case, but we still have a couple of more things to fix. First we have to add our shipping API to the Docker Compose Orchestrator. So I'm going to say add container orchestrator support, and I'm going to choose Docker Compose. If I now open up the Docker Compose YAML file, you can see I have my new service for the shipping API added to the orchestrator setup. Now I'm going to move it right below the eShop API, and I want to configure some additional values, like the ports that I want to expose, let's say 5003, and I also want them to connect to the same database using the connection strings environment variable and the open telemetry environment variables for exporting distributed traces to the Aspire dashboard. The next thing we need to solve is the messaging infrastructure that we're going to use between our modules. Previously we were using an in-memory message bus with mass transit, and this will simply not work because we are now in a distributed system. So this means we need to add a proper message broker, and for this I could configure something like RabbitMQ. Let's say I want to use the management image that exposes a UI where I can observe my exchanges and queues. I'm going to configure some volume mappings to my file system, the default username and password, and exposing some ports. And now I can define a connection string to my queue. Let's add another environment variable. So I'm going to say connection strings double underscore, and then I'll say queue, and I'm going to pass in the connection string value. I'll use the ANQP protocol, specify the username and password as they are defined in my service setup right here, and I'm also using the internal port and the host name for my RabbitMQ instance. So this is where RabbitMQ and the port comes from. Let's also define this in our other service. So now we're going to have the environment variables available. So now we need to take care of connecting to this RabbitMQ instance from my two API projects. So I want to install a NuGet package into my two projects, and I'm going to look for mass transit, and the library that I want to install is mass transit RabbitMQ. So I'm going to select the API projects, and install the latest version. So now if I go back to the program file, I should be able to say using RabbitMQ, and then I can configure the host by just specifying the connection string that I define in my environment variable. Let's go ahead and do the same in my other service. I'll say using RabbitMQ, and configure the host using the same connection string, and now my two services should connect to RabbitMQ that's running in the local Docker network. Now what's critical to make this work correctly is using the same types in the same namespaces for our message contracts. In our case, the message contract is the order created integration event, which is inside of the public API class library. Both of my API services are referencing this class library and using the same message contract in the same namespace. So this is how Mass Transit will be able to forward the messages from one application and have them consumed in the other. So now I can close this down, and what we have to do is fix our implementation of the public API. Remember that we are now in a distributed system, so we can no longer use in-memory calls, and we have to send a network request to be able to get a response back from the other module. So I'm going to inject the HTTP client factory, and I'm going to use it to implement this method, and what I want to do is get back a named client called orders, and I'll send a GET request to this URI, I'll specify orders, the order ID and the route, and then shipping info, and we expect to get back an order shipping info object, which is a type defined inside of our public API. So this satisfies the implementation for the order service inside of my shipping module. Now I also need to expose a respective endpoint that I can call, on the orders module. So let's go into the endpoint definitions, and I'm going to define another endpoint right at the end of this file. It's going to use the same route, orders, the order ID, and then shipping info, and I'm going to take the ID value from the route, 
inject my iOrder service, which is the same public API, but now implemented in the orders module. And this is the same implementation that we had at the start. This is going to take my database context, which I have available locally, and is going to return the order shipping info object from the database. So I'm going to use this to call the respective method, return back either not found or the shipping info object. Now, in order for us to be able to reach this endpoint, we also need to define our named client. So I'll go back to the configuration in my shipping service. This is where I'm configuring the order service implementation, and I'm going to drop in the configuration for the named client. I'll just say add HTTP client, provide a name, and specify the base address of the orders module, which is just our eShop API. I also have to specify this inside of my application settings, and I'm going to add the configuration value here. I'll say HTTP, specify eShop API, which is the name of my service in the Docker Compose file, and I'll use the internal port of 8080. So now we should be able to start the application and test out if we are able to consume the order created integration event, which is part of the public API of the orders module. And what we essentially did in this migration is elevated the logical boundaries between our modules into physical boundaries. If you want to learn much more about this, I have a complete course about the modular monolith architecture, and I'm going to leave the link to it in the pinned comment under this video. Now, before starting the application, let's make one small adjustment. And this is going to be my service name in the OpenTelemetry setup. So I'm going to call this the eShop Shipping API, and I'm going to update the R1 to be the eShop orders API. This will make it more obvious which module we are working with when we look at our distributed trace. So now I can start the application and test out the complete flow. So if I send a request to create an order, it's going to land on the eShop API, and this will be handled by our orders module. Then it's going to publish a message over RabbitMQ, and it's going to be picked up by the shipping module. But the shipping module also has to call the public API of the orders module, and you'll see how all of this comes together inside of the distributed trace. So let's jump into the Aspire dashboard, and you can see our distributed trace here. Here are the two modules, the eShop Orders API and the eShop Shipping API. So we start by sending a post request to the orders endpoint, and this is going to insert the record into the database, but it's also going to publish the order created integration event. This is going to be consumed by the Shipping API, which you can see here, and then this will start consuming this message inside of our integration event handler, but we also have to call the public API of the order module, which you can see here, and this is going to be our network request because we can no longer use method calls as we are not in the same application. So we'll get back the response from the orders API or the orders module, and then we'll be able to handle this message. So just a reminder, this is where we started. We had a modular monolith and our two modules were communicating using the public API. And what's important is that this was done using method calls. But when we extracted the module into a dedicated component, we could no longer use method calls and we had to re-implement the public API communication to use network calls. But if you go back to what we did in the video, we were just implementing the infrastructure components to allow for this communication to happen. We didn't have to change anything about our business logic. Now, obviously, there are still a couple of more things to do here, especially to how we are doing the network communication. We have to take care of resilience, of authentication, maybe introduce some caching to improve performance. But I hope you now have a better idea of what are some of the advantages of building a modular monolith instead of starting with a distributed system first, because you don't have to worry about so many moving parts. Network communication is one layer of complexity. We also had to introduce a message queue, and we didn't even consider how to split the database. If you want to learn more about the modular monolith architecture, I recommend that you check out the pinned comment that's going to be right under this video. If you are looking for an introduction to this architecture, then you should watch this video next. Check out my courses to improve your software architecture skills, and until next time, stay awesome.